Hi, I'm Lee Teschler, Executive Editor of Design World Magazine. And I'm Michelle DeFrangia, Assistant Editor of Design World Magazine. We've been tearing down LED bulbs designed to put out the same amount of light as 60 watt incandescent bulbs. The bulb we have in front of us is from Osran, Sylvania. This bulb is notable in that it has a relatively small two-piece heat sink. One piece is a one-inch high pentagon-shaped tower that doubles as a backing for six LED boards holding 18 LEDs, three LEDs on each face. They're oriented as five sides with a sixth board sitting atop the Pentagon Tower. The other is a three-quarter inch long cylindrical cast heat sink that apparently snap fits to the upper part of the plastic dome that houses the LEDs. The cylindrical cast heat sink and tower together weigh 1.3 ounces. The base of the unit is a one-piece plastic housing that holds the AC-DC converter circuit board. Two wires connect the board to the Pentagon-shaped tower. In consumer products like LED bulbs, we're always curious about how much of the device was done with automated methods and how much was done by hand. In that regard, the connections between the boards holding the LEDs appear to have been reflow soldered, but the discrete wires between the circuit board and the LED assembly appear to have been hand soldered judging by the globs of solder we found on the connections. Similarly, the connections to the bulb base are discrete wires with one squeezed between the metal screw threads, the other a machine assembled to the bulb foot. Elia, I understand you had a little trouble getting at the circuit in this one. Yep. For reasons that are not completely clear, the designers of the Osram bulb chose to pot the AC-DC converter board in some rubber-like material. It's possible the material is meant to improve the thermal dissipation because the heat sink in, in the bulb is smaller than in some other designs we've seen. The rubber stuff did, however, complicate the process of deciphering the circuit. We had to use a little handheld milling tool to get rid of it so we could see the circuit details. Is there any other reason besides heat sinking that they might have decided to coat this thing with all that gunk? Well. Maybe the most obvious reason is to protect against moisture, but this bulb is not designed to be outdoors where moisture might be a problem, and there are other LED bulbs that don't bother putting any kind of coating on their circuit board. Now, some bo companies will pot their boards this way to protect the details from people like us bent on doing a teardown to, to see the details. You might do this if there's proprietary technology on the board that you don't want competitors to see, but this rubber material comes off with some simple milling and picking, so it doesn't really work for trying to hide something. Plus, the circuit you find on the board, once you finally do get through all that rubber stuff, is not much different than the reference application circuit published by the supplier of the AC-DC converter chip. So you'd have to ask, what is there on this thing that you'd want to hide? It's just not apparent. What did you find under all this rubber stuff? Once we re removed enough of it to see things, we found that the main circuit board for the Osram LED bulb is two-sided. It contains two ICs, one a diode bridge for the AC input, the other an SSL 21082AT driver IC from NXP semiconductors. The NXP chip implements features that include dimming, over-temperature protection, LED over-temperature control, output short protection, and a restart mode that kicks in when there's a brownout. This IC has an integrated internal high voltage switch and works as a boundary conduction mode, or BCM, buck converter. What's a BCM? Well, the explanation of BCM gets a bit involved. The name refers to periods of conduction and non-conduction in the power inductor in the switching circuit. In certain modes of operation, there can be a brief dead time during each switching cycle during which there's no current flowing through the inductor. The simplified, simplified explanation of BCM is that the current through the inductor is never zero. It's either rising or falling. And when the inductor current falls to zero, the next switching cycle begins immediately. Compared to other operating modes where you do have some dead time, BCM is a lot more energy efficient. Well, remind me to review that next time I have insomnia. <laughs> Anyway, if you want to see more videos as fascinating as this one, log on to designworldonline.com and thanks for watching.